Hi guys, a short message from me before we get the show rolling. Our first year of recording the Khandan podcast comes to an end. And looking back at 2018, the love, the feedback, the kichai we got from our tens of thousands of listeners really has been the tri- driving force for the show. And we wanted to thank each and every one of you for listening to us and uh, loving the show, appreciating the show. And uh, yeah, just... Um, getting in touch with us. I also wanted to take a moment to thank all the guests we've had this year. So Anisha Javeri, Beth Watkins, Shivani Tripathi, Tan- Tanvi Rastogi, Sunny Singh, Mike McHale, Jay Mamtora, Sami Datta, Max Da Vinci, Raja Sen. We ho- you were all wonderful guests and we hope to have you back on next year. If I forgot anybody, please forgive me. My record keeping isn't the best and I'm doing this just before I shut down things for the year. Um, I also wanted to pe- let the people know that we still ha- we would still love to get some iTunes reviews and ratings. So if you can send us a review and then copy paste that review and or take a screenshot and send it to upodcasting at gmail dot com, I can still send you a few swag bags we have left from this year's that this year we ran a few filmy competitions and people didn't always claim their prizes. So I still have a few of those. So if you are even one of the first to send us a review, I can let you choose between a zero gift bag a thugs of hindustan gift bag one from swedhaga or one from hitchki um so but even um if they run out we would still love your reviews it really helps out new listener fi- listeners find out our podcast and also then be part of the khandan and i uh, Again, and just to kind of before the get, show gets started, I again want to wish you all an amazing end of the year and an even better 2019. And I know Amrita and Sujoy wish you all of the best too. Um, basically, may all your poultry farms have hazaro murgia and and aur un hazaro murgiyon ke karoro ande. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy the show and uh, thanks for listening, guys. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Did you read the read the uh, Bharadwaj Rangan review? No, I should go do that uh, while we're getting ourselves settled. Yeah, I think you should because it's like the only like because I mean there's not that many sensible people writing about Bollywood anyway. I feel. <laughs> but uh, he's like one that has something like a very positive one. So I was like, wow, this is really out of left field. Wow. Yeah. Even that. Yeah, the title is even a bit. I was actually. Um, laughing ab- uh, about it earlier today with uh, Maithali, who's like one of my other Twitter fans, and I was like, I'm just waiting for Br to write like his three hundred three thousand word essay in which he'll tell us why this is actually a work of genius. And she was like, like literally five hours later, she was like texting me and she was like, I just want to inform you that <laughs> <laughs> this is come out. Oh, then it is exactly what you said, and I was like, "I know my fans. I know who. I know who they are." <laughs> anyway, well, uh, like somebody sent it to me this morning, and uh-huh. I was reading it, and I was like, "Okay, so this is uh, so zero is to Bharatwaj Rangan what Thugs of Hindustan is to me." <laughs> <laughs> But it also, you know, like it was reading, I was reading it and I was so detached from what he was writing. And I was like, man, this is how people must feel when they listen to me find these meta narratives into things that just don't connect with people. I was like, man, this is how I sound. I sound insane. (laughs) (laughs) So his review didn't make me like re-examine the movie. It made me re-examine my identity. (laughs) Now that's Uh, powerful writing. Dusting off his hands, like my work here is done. Yeah, I'm like, wow, this is powerful writing. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna send this to Rangan, and I'm gonna be like, you need to listen to this <laughs> because he's gonna get a kick out of it. <laughs> and also, like people, like the younger reviewers today, like they're not a they don't know what they're talking about half the time. Secondly, like a lot of them are just. They have no like social media manners, you know. Like I was just thinking about it today because um, yesterday, Sammy, like Lipstick Patrol, um, she read this review by somebody who works for Film Companion. Rahul and, Desai. Uh, 
ha who i don't know at all but he wrote something about like how like a movie is like truly fucked or something if uh, katrina, katrina gets is the, the best movie. part of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh sammy was like why are you being so snide about it like why do you have to be this unnecessarily snarky about it and she wasn't like being a super uh cat fan or like rude or anything about it she was just like you know she's a hard working girl and uh you don't need to shit all over her to just make your point that's all she said and she was i mean i can't i don't have the tweet in front of me but it was like a fairly innocuous kind of uh, tweet and he got back and he was like incredibly snide about it like he was just yeah. like I don't know if this is worthy of a response but yeah. like blah 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 and I was like why why do you have to be like that you know and then there was like a million of his I guess his readers and if a man is to be judged by his readers and these are like <laughs> the worst readers on the planet because they're all just so sexist and misogynist about it. it's just like a whole list of people who is just like you know like oh you know she's an item girl she doesn't know how to dance and I'm like I've said before that Katrina can't act and she's not like an actress actress but it's not her fault that she gets cast in these movies I mean she's she's out there hustling this guy's writing for a website he's writing movie reviews for a website there's no greater hustle um so I'm like you should appreciate somebody else who's also hustling like she's she's not like out there killing your parents and making money off it like she's just doing her job you know like there's no need to like be that way about it uh, you know- so you can you can think that she's not a good actress and it's true she's not a good actress but there's no need to be like oh like you know she's like the worst blah 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 like, uh, you know what it, what it made, reminded me of because i i i'd seen her tweet and i totally agreed with uh, what uh, sami friend of the show was saying anyway um but then i this morning i saw how much retweet and feedback she'd gotten on it and then i'd also seen rahul reply to it and i was like well, you know what this reminds me of is when you point out the misogyny of like liberal men yeah it just enrages them like how can you ever even like think that i would have these but just look at the language used look at the like you know some of the tweets that are coming back and i would i would assume most of these people would assume they are liberals right like not like okay. right wing conservative but just because po- and it's clear like there is something in that language that does have a little bit of a shade of misogyny in there right like especially if, if you start calling her an item girl people are still saying that she can't speak hindi which is just not true it's 100% not true i've seen enough of her interviews and you know how obsessively i watch these things uh when, when <laughs> katrina is involved she speaks perfectly well hindi now like it like and she has for the last few years so even this kind of criticism that she's just an item girl and like we have these discussions with our friends a lot of times you know a lot of our friends are not katrina ke fans and that's totally fine but diminishing diminishing her this way like just a item girl or she's like just a side to the khans i just don't think that's true and it hasn't been true for at least the last 5 to 8 years i would say and also like i've you know i was just saying like it was this and then it was that whole sonam situation where sonam was like props to me for like starting the whole like fashion photography thing which actually you know what sonam's not wrong like sonam was the first person yeah. to actually get her looks uh, photographed or whatever i, I think and you even she, made that point on the last episode didn't you yeah, like sonam like, like said that this, trend exactly even before like she said anything i was talking about it and i was like yeah like sonam did Sonam was a fashion girl, you know. Like she did, uh, she really leaned in hard to that um, sort of uh, persona, and she gave herself props for it, which is fair enough. Like you know, like if you like, pe- more people should have confidence like that. And then of course, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, like Sonam is like this, Sonam is like that, and blah blah blah. And somebody on Twitter, like Furry, uh, Furry, I think. uh was talking about like all the things that sonam has done regarding fashion and how important fashion can be for a celebrity like sonam and how bollywood has sort of adopted that wholesale and she really was a trend setter which is all true and i was just thinking you know like people and this is men and women it's not just about men like people have no problem shitting on women when they are talking about their achievements so katrina fine and she's an item girl fine if you if he, let's say that she is she does it to like a level that like nobody else is doing at present like not even like your faves i'm sorry but it's true she's like really athletic she really puts in the effort 
Suggs might have been a disaster, but nobody was saying that. And the choreography might have been like really weird, but like Katrina really sold it as much as she could, you know. Mm. So like, she's the best she can. Sonam's doing the best she can. Deepika is doing the best she can. Anushka is doing the best she can. Like all of these women are like doing the best they can, and they're patting themselves on the back for it. And everybody seems to have like some sort of problem with these women. But nobody says the same thing about like Tiger Shroff, you know, or except uh, me. Except me. <laughs> except me. <laughs> Your ghar ki murgi. So like, uh, but like people never say, you know, like Tiger Shroff can't act, and all he does is parkour and like you know do these ridiculous things. But like I don't make fun of Tiger Shroff for that. Like I do point out that he can't act either, but I don't go around saying like, oh, Tiger Shroff, so I just never do some. Kid, like he should be given out of the industry or like why is he here? I don't say these stupid things like that. Like what the hell is wrong with people? Like why do they have to be so snide about women? I, I was actually funny thinking when we was uh, we were talking initially about what we we're going to do on this episode. Uh, we were talking about the Mani Karna trailer, right? And you said like, mm-hmm. oh, Kangana's diction has improved, right? Mm-hmm. So I. I I, it's not a criticism I hear a lot about Kangana, right? Like her diction being mm. terrible, or you know, Deepika's diction being terrible. I've honestly never heard that mentioned in any review I've read of their work, right? But this mm-hmm. Katrina gave can speak Hindi thing. It just is like every every time for the last. 20 years that this girl has been working it's like she can't speak Hindi and it doesn't let go it's, I just find it a, a funny way to put down certain women and not others um, I don't think we should put down any women that's what I'm, what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say but it's just like I don't think Deepika or um, uh, Kangana's diction is great or dialogue delivery is great either and they're native born Indians right so mm-hmm that burden should maybe be placed a bit more on them than on Katrina, who isn't, or I don't even know where she's from, but that's, she's like Batman, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she just appeared in Bombay one day. Pretty yeah. much. Pretty and, much. Yeah, and Batman also, you know, like a different writer comes in and it has a different origin story. It's the same thing with Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> they keep rebooting it like Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you and been also, keeping up with all this, Beth? Have you been keeping up with what's going on with the Zero? Well, I saw, I mean, I saw that particular exchange that you're talking about. And I don't, you know, his initial tweet doesn't bother me at all because as someone who thinks Katrina is a god-awful actor, that's the kind of thing I would say. But I would leave it at that. So, I, I mean... I have to admit that Sammy's response surprised me a little bit, but maybe there's more context about um, the general talking about Katrina that I'm not aware of that, you know, that made me, that would have made me be like, okay, that's the last straw. I have to say something about this. So, um, but I agree that, you know, women, women are, of course, are, are criticized for all sorts of things that Tiger Shroff and other people of his ilk are not whatsoever. So, yeah. And also, like, the thing that people are actually giving a grief over is that she's apparently good in Zero. So, <laughs> I'm just like, if you actually like the performance, then why are you being that way, you yeah. know? Yeah. Would have been one thing if, she, they, if he had hated the the performance and he had been like, wow, she's the worst. Mm-hmm. Then that would have been something, okay, fine. So, now that's why he's being snide about it. But then he he appears to have liked her performance. So, then what? Mm-hmm. I, I just don't get it. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we start with a rant. <laughs> that's always a good way to the Ramadan. Um, but yeah, I wanna let's get started. Huh? Like, uh, so Sujoy can't make it today because he's somewhere in the Asman ke badal, um, Pariyun ke saath. <laughs> so we have top friend Beth with us. Hey, top friend. Hello, top friend. <laughs> so good to have you back on. So what are we doing this episode? We, I, I don't know, some, maybe some people saw me, uh, heard me on the BBC Asian Network. Um, uh, we, we did kind of a, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I got some nice, really good nice people. Nice name there. Sorry? <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you heard me on the BBC and yeah. it's just this little network that I was on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like shameless plugging it, you know, like you know, just by the way, as a, as an aside, did you hear me on the biggest, most illustrious broadcasting <laughs> company in the world? Uh, 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I got a lot of feedback from people that they really enjoyed it. And but what, what we did there was kind of a, an award ceremony that they called the Harunis. And I didn't agree with a lot of them. So I thought, okay, I'm starting the Asamis. So this is what we're doing now. <laughs> we're, we're kind of doing a year end review and kind of having our own little award show. Um, we're going to be talking about a few of the trailers that came out, Mani Karnika and uh, Legend of Mola Jet, because they technically have two Khans in them, so we have to do it. Mm, <laughs> and yes, then, we do. Yeah, we do. And then we have the Zero uh, zero Review, which is our main review. Um, so that's going to be the show. And um, maybe, Amrita, you also had a book that you wanted to talk about, right? Maybe we can yeah. talk about that first. So uh, this is actually a bit of a nerd thing, uh, but I know like there's a lot of uh, people out there. So like um, who are interested in like old Hindi cinema uh, journalism. Um, so it's like uh, Babu Rao Patel and like all that kind of stuff. But there's um, also like a bunch of like, so back in the day, a lot of the film journalism used to be done in Urdu rather than in English or Hindi. And uh, that's because like back in the day, like the languages hadn't been bifurcated along with the partition. So people in India still spoke Urdu and like so on and so forth. Um, so that's like very much a forgotten era today in India. And there's this one person, his name is Yasser Abbasi. And he has collected a bunch of um, articles in Urdu that were written or narrated or like, you know, like a first person account by um, like stars and directors from the golden age of Hindi cinema. So like from the 40s or 50s or 60s. And people like Nargis and Noshad and uh, Mina Kumari and all these people. And they would write about their peers and their colleagues in the, in, the, uh, in the Hindi film industry. And it was all written in Urdu. And what he's done is he's translated those into English mm. and he's uh, published it. So I'll put up a link in the description for those of you who are interested. And it's called Undino Ki Baat Hai. And it's by Yasser Abbasi. And I was actually put onto it by Jay Arjun Singh because uh, I, I think Jay is like friends with Yasser because, of course, um, and they were talking about it on Facebook. <laughs> and I sort of creeped out poor Yasser Abbasi, who seems to be a very nice person, but like unused to social media. So <laughs> um, for some reason, like I thought he had like an author page. So I was like, hey, I'll follow his author page because his book hadn't come out then. His book just came out. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll follow his author page. And I clicked follow. And then it turned out that wasn't his author page. That was actually his personal private page. So he sent me a message saying, like, who are you and why do you want to be my friend? And I was just like, I'm not a bot. I'm sorry. I'm Jess. And I thought that was like an author page. So anyway, I was like super creepy about it and in return I'm just plugging his book because I think it'll be interesting so I bought my copy and um, you should too <laughs> interesting yeah I was lo- I, I was looking at the interview that uh, you sent over um, yeah I think we can mm-hmm. add, it, add it in the show lines but yeah it's very like Khalis Urdu so I think some people might have tr- trouble with understanding it although <laughs> uh, yeah it, it looked very fascinating although it's it's really not my thing these kind of old uh, old era golden yeah. era <laughs> cinema thing but it was uh, it was interesting it looked interesting you can maybe give oh. us some excer- exper- excerpts on the next uh, time oh yeah and reading it yeah. or actually we oh, could oh. ask Yasser to come on on uh, on uh, if he's not good with social media well, that could be a good good discussion I'll ask, him. I'll yeah. ask him oh uh, by the way when um, Asim says that some that it was in Khalis Urdu he means the videos in Khalis Urdu <laughs> not the book the book is in English yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said that I was like didn't you just say it was translated I'm so confused <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can't read Urdu, so... <laughs> yeah, even I was confused when he sent it. I can't wait to read it. I was like, wait, can, can Amrita read Urdu? Because I can't. <laughs> I should get some lessons from Amrita. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. This is... Uh, he. So he found a whole bunch of these from, like, defunct magazines and stuff. And then he translated it into um, English. And he's compiled them and he's published them. So that's what's happening. Thank you. Nice, 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 nice. That's a great idea. What's it called mm-hmm. in the book? Ye undine ki baat hai. 
grand-scale historical wackadoodle. Like so, Veer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Veer. Like Mohenjo Daro, which I had high hopes for, and obviously, you know, it did not deliver. But So, in theory, I'm all for this movie, but the, I mean, the CGI is god-awful. <laughs> um, I was really, really confused when I saw um, Bengali actor Dishu Sengupta in there. Like, what what is he doing in this movie? <laughs> Who is he playing? There are been... Uh, he is... The, yeah, I think so. Oh, he's yeah, the Sunu Sud replacement. Guy. Yeah. Um, and he just doesn't seem like a guy who's the right scale for this kind of movie, right? This is loud and big. And he's in things like, you know, when he does Hindi films, he's in Piku and Mardani. So um, that seems really odd to me. But, um, yeah, I am I definitely want to see it. It looks crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, just uh, maybe people haven't followed it that much, the Mani Karnika thing, but um, the, the, it's, it's been kind of in the news and controversial for a while, right? Like the director yeah. left uh, and Kangana took over, then Sonu Sood left because of the director leaving, I think, and then she replaced him too. And now she's got a director credit now, which is kind of cool. I think it's still cool that like a, yeah. a, like a main lead actress is, has a director's credit and it's something that she's been kind of, you know, wanting to do since I think Queen. That's the first time I heard that after Queen or before Queen, she left for I think New York and did some, some course about movie making and was making some shorts and she wanted to really get, in, get into the director's game. And I think for her it's a lot about control too because I think she feels that um, her being in control is the only way that she can have a movie that she wants to be part of. And yeah. uh, I don't know if it's like a female version of Amir Khan or something like that. I don't know what it is, but uh, obviously they don't have the same personality, Amir and um, um, Kangana. Um, so, yeah, just to kind of give context, and the movie is coming out, so which is which is pretty amazing that they pulled it off. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Amrita, what did you think about it? Uh, the CGI hasn't improved, has it? No. <laughs> but I think it's also like budget constraints, no? Like, I don't think, like, you know, like, we're going to be talking about the CGI in Zero a little bit later mm-hmm. on, right? And that, I would say, Red Chili's is probably the best VFX studio India has at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, or at least Bollywood has at the moment. Um, so, Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe we can talk about the CG a bit later too. But yeah, it's not. It's not great. <laughs> um, I so the problem with actors who become directors is like some of them are able to do it, right? Like um, usually people who take them those out of the movie. So like uh, like Deepak uh, Tijori. How, no, no, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking a little uh, more like Ron Howard or like Rob Reiner or somebody. Right. But um, sure, Deepak <laughs> Tejal. <laughs> but uh, the problem with uh, a lot of actors who put themselves in the movie is that they get a little bit indulgent. Mm. And the movie becomes like a exercise in ego stroking. And I have a feeling like if there was anybody who was like inclined to that, it would be Kangana. Mm. So I am extremely doubtful about this, but I and the scenes that I've seen, they don't really they don't really inspire confidence just because no. it seems like a long a series of basically reaction shots of, you know, Kangana being like angry and then Kangana <laughs> being soulful, Kangana being <laughs> determined and courageous and angry and so on and so forth. So I don't know, like, I don't know how, I, I don't have a sense of the movie. I just have a sense of like the different emotions that Kangana experiences through the movie. <laughs> so um, I don't know, maybe she'll surprise me, you know, surprise me, queen. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, queen. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pull it off. I can't say ask queen. 
And no, we agreed upon this a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, Amrita, I actually had a question for you after watching the trailer. Did India exist at that time already? No. Like India as a notion, as an idea? Because there's a lot of like nationalism. It's like Bharat, Bharat yeah. here, Bharat there, India, Bharat. Yeah. But no. it didn't exist, right? These, these were I still... Mean, not as how we understand it. Yeah. I mean, the concept of a Bharat, Varsh and yeah. uh, Hindustan existed. Mm-hmm. But it was a very, it was a much more fluid and a much more, uh, much different sort of uh, idea than like uh, what they are saying right now. Yeah. So, you know, like wh- when what we mean by India right now is not what they are talking about in yeah. the 19th century. So, and also like this is not going to be historically accurate. The story of Jhansi in particular uh, not just the Rani of Jhansi, but Jhansi as a kingdom and like what happened in Jhansi is a very complicated, messy story with like all kinds of like terrible things that happened on both sides. So mm. I don't think we're going to get a historically accurate film mm. necessarily, but uh, then like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like that's how, that, that, that's how these movies work. So, you know. Mm-hmm. This seems like a really um, unwieldy thing to try to take on as your first time as a director, doesn't it? It, it was. Uh, she does claim it's uh, writers of Bahubali, which I was like, which writer of Bahubali did Mani Karnika? I, I need to I check that. <laughs> wasn't Bahubali written by the guy that like directed it? No, no, no. It was somebody else. It was his dad. His dad wrote it, right? Mm. Uh, Raja Mauli's dad okay. wrote it, I think. He also wrote Bajrangi Bhaijan at the same time. Mm-hmm. Huh. Weird. Okay. Oh, yeah, Vijendra Prasad. Now he's written Manikamika. Yeah, it is Vijendra Prasad. He did write. Yeah. He is he is Raja Mauli's dad, yeah. He did write it. Story and screenplay credit. Hmm. So does Weird. that fill you with more hope then? <laughs> oh, but he also did Yamadanga. <laughs> Okay, uh, is that what is that? <laughs> and Magadira, and Magadira, and Ida, and you know, yeah, some of those. Uh, yeah, all Raja Modi uh, movies. Uh, Yamadonga, yeah. I don't know. What, what is that? What, what is that uh, funny or is that uh, funny? We've talked with Tem- our uh, you know friend of the friend of the show Temple about this movie, mm-hmm. um, but you should click on the IMDb entry for it to see the the poster because I think that will tell you what you need to know about okay. Yamadanga. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't know. Did, like, sorry. No, I, I feel like the title is your clue. It's called Yamadonga. <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't want to go for the obvious because I was like, <laughs> my understanding of language is not great, so I don't want to be, I don't want to say or think anything that's uh, offensive. But yeah, that's where my initial thought went to. <laughs> uh, did you guys watch the? Oh my lord, what is this poster? <laughs> I, actually, <laughs> I actually went to see Yamadanga in the theater because it showed up here, and the after about twenty minutes, the. F- the film, which uh, was an actual, you know, film film, broke or something, and they couldn't get it going again. And I was like, I think I've just been spared something here. <laughs> I was uh, talking about the Kanna trailer, how uh, how uh, Kangana came like with like a gang of women in saris and like cannons. <laughs> I was like, oh, w- like wondering how long is this cannon theme going to be? Are there going to be like cannons outside of the cinema, like you know, making sure people are going in and stuff like that? But what I found most funny is how much she lifts from other movies um, in this, right? Like, um, there's a uh, the scene is lifted completely from Jodha Akbar. There's one where she jumps over these uh, sword fighters and jumps onto an elephant, which is completely what Ritik did, uh, like jumping on the elephant. Oh yeah, you're right. And the exact the final dialogue of the Mani Karnika trailer is the exact same final dialogue of the Mohanji Tharoor trailer, <laughs> which. I don't know, like, if it's, like, Kangana still doing her scorched earth approach that she's doing with Ritik, but, oh, my God, I got to uplo- applaud that move. Just lifting, like, I- entire dialogues from the guys that uh, that scorned her. Uh, much respect for that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also saw she got uh, uh, Danny Dinzongpa from... Yes, I'm excited about that part. Yeah, I he- am so happy to see him again. 
Because I only remember her last time from Ahsoka, where he was doing the exact same role. So it looks like he took the same clothes and just showed up at the Mani Karnika oh, yeah. shoot. No, this is his, I mean, this is his sweet spot, this kind of thing. Yeah. He's he's yeah. a very good actor and he can do lots of things really well. But I think this is, you know, this is taking what he did in the 70s and just pulling it forward age appropriately. And he's he's golden. He can walk in and do that with no rehearsal at, at all. Yeah. <laughs> They, they, she also brought some Lagan type Doluga, Do, Doguna Lagan Englishman, which obviously because of the yeah. movie, there's there's gonna be that. I also like the kid. Isn't that like a Temur lookalike? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Temur Ali Khan. I mean, I don't I don't follow as much the pictures of the kid and stuff like that. But he's like, is he looks very very similar. Like it can be like a, you know, that Kangana didn't think of that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I'm sure yeah, she maybe. thought of it. Like, get me like a kid like Tamur. Like, that's what we need. <laughs> he seems popular. That settles. Yeah. yeah. He seems popular. Yeah. <laughs> But she, she, there's a few shots in there though that like she's unleashing her inner Nicolas Cage, you know, <laughs> it's it's pretty bonkers the way she's like you know chopping people's heads off with sword. But she's that really was- playing into that nationalistic jingoistic card, right? Like just like cut these people in pieces and har har mahadev and all this. It's uh, it's quite scary, I must say. <laughs> At least it makes sense now why she was like cozying up to all the BJP people. Yeah. Um, Right. So. Yeah, there is a strategy behind the madness, it seems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is Ritik's movie still coming out on that day? I have heard nothing of it. Shouldn't there at least be know. a trailer or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny where that guy is, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so let's move to the second trailer. Uh, the Legend of uh, Mola Jut. <laughs> That's how you need to pronounce it. Mola Jatta. Oi, Mola Jatta. This Punjab is Chukya Si. Ik Surme Vair da Par. Sad da Jat the Yar Gandasa. Utto Pio Sardar. So so meal te dunke Jat de Take Jeda Pasa. Jat to Vad Karak Si Karda. जट दा तेज गंडा सा इस पंजाब दा होर इक थम सी नूरी नत सदावे नतां चो जेड़ा बुजद लबे आपे मार दा जावे दुश्मन फड़ फड़ मारे जेड़े अख दे बन जावन रोड़े नूरी नत दी दहशत वग दे दरिया पीछे मोड़े बुझी आग विच दबया हवरे किथे रुकया शोला पुत्र सी एक जट दा यारो ना सी जिस दा माला I was telling Asif this, like, uh, I've been hearing about this movie for a long time and I actually thought it was like a real legend of some kind in <laughs> Pakistani Punjab. Like, the way yeah. people were talking about it for, like, years and years. I thought it must be, like, you know, like, Shirin Fahad or, like, Heer Ranja or something. That must Ooh. be, like, Mona <laughs> Jat. <laughs> and then it turns out it is like one of those movies that, like, get uh, featured on, like, Hotspot. Do you remember Hotspot? Sure the, do. Yeah, like for those of you who don't know, there's like a website called Hotspot, and they basically do. Uh, is this one guy, and he does these reviews of Pakistani and Indian movies, and mostly a lot of Pakistani movies actually. And yeah. he does like the best write-ups. Like they're very mm-hmm. short, but I've literally never come across like a Pakistani movie and been like, uh, I need to look up. Like IMDb has nothing on it, but Hotspot will always have something mm-hmm. on it. Uh, it's never let me down. It's amazing. It's really good. And um, like, yeah, so it's like the legend of... Uh, Asim, did you grow up watching the old one? Hell no. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no, no. The only thing I... I mean, I, I, I have watched enough Sultan Rahi movies to know what those movies are. And what I... Like, the image I remember is... 
Sultan Rai on the in Karachi on that on the cinema holdings in like this really cheap posters holding like a mm. bloody axe in his hand. So that's how I remember Maula Jat pretty much. But this came out in seventy nine, so I was not even born at that time. So yeah, it's it's very very old. Okay, but it is a it's a. I mean, it's a massive hit. This movie is so loved by people. It is. It is probably the most well-known and Pakistani movie. I th- I would say it's really like up there. So I also didn't understand if they were ma- remaking it. Was this kind of an update? And then I kind of started to read a little bit about it. And apparently, it's a. It's it, it. It wasn't even one movie. It was like four or five movies. So it was like <laughs> one of the first franchises in Pakistan cinema. Apparently, there's even a Maula Jat in London. Ah. So London may be Maula Jat. You know, like that kind of thing. So, which I wonder what that is, honestly. Um, so yeah, and it really like solidified Sultan Rahi as this masculine hero and just doesn't take shit from anybody. I would say he's like you had Amitabh on in India and we had Sultan Rahi on our end, which just goes the, to show the chasm in quality between both cinemas at that time. Um, and I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I saw I I. Rahi before and I was just like nah yeah. <laughs> like, this, like, I, I, I have like I don't want to be like an international incident person <laughs> but, and it was literally like are you kidding me yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I understand like you know like I come from South India. I understand, like you know, things happen. Yeah, and I mean, the eighties. <laughs> the eighties were terrible everywhere in cinema, right? They were terrible in Hollywood. They were terrible in Bollywood. So obviously, they were going to be ten times worse in Pakistan cinema, which didn't even, you know, doesn't really have like a distribution network. It doesn't have any budgets, and all those con- t- constraints of budgets of it's it's so much a product of its time. All of that is kind of, you know, encapsulated in what Maula Jat was. But it, and I'll be honest, like, there is also some sort of, like, social embarrassment about these kind of cinema. And I think I'm probably part of that kind of social embarrassment because it doesn't cater to my uh, demographics socially, I would say. It's speaking to, you know, like, more of a grassroots, uh, what we call single screen cinema now in India, right? That's what this was kind of playing to, and it spoke about, you know, issues that they they were dealing about, like classism and, you know, landowners and the abuse that they put on uh, the population. But where I was coming from is like, oh, this is just cheap and, you know, this is, uh, I don't want to watch it, you know. Also, there's a language barrier. A lot of it is in Punjabi and I think a lot of it is based on, like, Punjabi theater, I would say. Um, and I think also the short story of Maula Jat was based on a play. So there mm. is that kind of element where Punjabi theater is like a lot of, like, looking at the, at the audience and screaming very loudly the dialogue, which, again, is a lot of the original Maula Jat, I would say. Um, but... Yeah, I, so I haven't seen it. I tried to watch like twenty minutes of it on YouTube, but it was it was it was horrible. I just couldn't get through it. It's 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 very hard. Um, but what did you guys think of the new trailer, though? I was just very surprised to see Fawad in it. Like is yeah. he right? Like this is very. I I can see why he took it. Like it's very against this uh, image so far. Like either, yeah. whether in Pakistan or in India, mm. like he plays very like non-rural characters so i can see like why he would think of this as a challenge and why he would take it up but it was very surprised to see him in that get up yeah yeah Yeah. what about you beth what did you think well i i just uh yeah i'm the same i I didn't expect to see him in this it took me a second to recognize him and and like you i've tried to watch some sultan rahi films on youtube and not gotten very far because they're i i there's so much happening that i don't understand and it's so shouty um (laughs) And yeah. rapey and Very violent rapey. and, you know, just extremely <laughs> rapey. Yeah. Um, so, but it's it's just interesting to think about this being remade at this time and what does that say about what people are eager to see and, and that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, I have, I'm sure it won't screen anywhere near me, but if it does, I would love to go see it. And I think reading the, you know, reading the think pieces after it comes out will be pretty interesting. Yeah. All of the Pakistani people I follow on Twitter have been tweeting out, like, uh, things that people have written, like even before the movie is coming out, like think pieces are coming out because I guess this is a big deal in Pakistan, right? Like it yeah, seems it is. to be like the 
Like I thought it was just advertised, and they were just saying that. But there's just genuine excitement about this movie, and I think this is like uh, Fawad appearing on screen after like I well, think the last yeah. time it was in Air Dilemma, right? Yeah, like, and they, they, I they, think they, so. Both of them yeah. are really popular. Like Mahira Khan is like is she Shah Rukh from Pakistan? Like it's insane, like how mm-hmm. popular she is. So seeing yeah. these two together, and also the director, uh, I think his name is Bilal Lashiri, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm-hmm. or luxury I, I need to probably check this um, um, he I mean his his previous movie was quite successful uh, War um, and oh yeah it, uh-huh. it, it, I've, I've heard of War yeah it even had kind of a, a, a little bit of um, like international success uh, it's Bilal mm-hmm. Lashiri, uh, Lashari sorry uh, Bilal Lashari um, and uh, it was quite successful and I think what was most impressive about it was kind of the high class visuals he brought in to Pakistani mm. cinema, which is something that Pakistan has always struggled with. So he had kind of a very international approach and he really like upped the game there. And I think that's also what he's trying to go for with this update of the Mola Jut story. Um, it looks very much Game of Thrones. It looks very much Padmavad, Bahubali, that kind of thing that they're mm-hmm. going for. Um, and I think uh, the criticism I was hearing is that it feels almost so Carl Drogo-ish and uh, that, that it doesn't feel Punjabi anymore. You know, oh. it's missing the essence mm-hmm. of Punjab, you know, that uh, that earthiness that the old stories had. But um, yeah, it's uh, I, I think it's true. I, I, I do feel it's very much heavily relying on, um, you know, those Padmavats and the Game of Thrones. But I think that's what audiences want necessarily. They don't want an earthy Punjabi movie and it's not necessarily something that would travel. And you would also not need a Bilal Lash- Lashari if you wanted to make that movie. You know, if you're bringing in mm. uh, a filmmaker that has a very clear sense of what he wants to do, then you need to give him, uh, you need to allow him the space to, you know, tell the story the way he wants. Uh, one of the interesting things that I was reading in the Think Pieces was that apparently in the the Sultan Ragi uh, uh, Mola that the the bay uh, apparently the heart of the movie lies in like the relationship between the hero and the villain and the way that this guy like I linked to it in the in the in the description but but the way that it was described in this piece which is like very well written uh, it's kind of sounded a bit homo romantic especially <laughs> the gifts. Because he basically said, like, you know, they keep apparently, like, uh, so they're in search of each other to beat up and kill and whatever. And, like, for half the movie, <laughs> apparently, they don't really know that they're looking for each other. So they keep bumping into each other and they don't know who the other person is. But they're completely fascinated by each other and they keep looking at each other and making eyes at each other <laughs> because they're, like, fascinated by each other. And there are these gifts on it. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> oh, I don't... It's that very, like, they see, uh, how do I explain it? Like, you know what I'm talking about, Asim. Like, you know, like, the guys, the male bonding in South Asia, which seems very homoromantic, but they don't really think of it as homoromantic, where there's, like, like, you know, it's it's like Uh, bhaichara almost. Yeah, yeah, I I know what you mean, and... Honestly, I I do feel it's latent, like homosexuality. Like there, there's no two ways about it. I think in a in a in an environment where you do not have access to, you know, speaking with women, you don't have access to any kind of sexual, um, how do you say, you know, like exploration or. Uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> like satisfaction possible. There's just a lot of these things that going on, and like having seen not be part of it, there like there's a lot of times that some certain lines get crossed uh, sexually in those friendships. That I mean, we, people are just lying to each other at that point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like I feel like that is apparently apparently the women in the um, the Sultan Rahi uh, or even the other one, you know, like the original one, where she jat I think that was called. Mm-hmm. But apparently, like those the women aren't really like the romantic focus. It's like the the villain and the hero who like really focus on each other, and apparently that's the heart of the movie. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how that will play out in this version. Like, yeah. are they actually going to keep that? you know, aspect. 
Yeah, there seems to be a little more romanticness going on now that Mahira is involved, which I, I'm so happy to see Mahira on screen. I love her see, seeing her on screen. It's uh, and I think this this is like I hope she gets a big role and she's not playing like you know side heroine Khaleesi ty- ki- kind of thing here. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody has seen a Sultan Rahi movie or at least even a song with Sultan Rahi. This dude does not look interested in women. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they are just dancing around him and like aaja sone hai and aaja sone hai, you know jumping this and he's not interested he just wants revenge and he wants to put his ganda sign to people so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so, so how many geographies has I, have i pissed I off already in this few minutes <laughs> all of south india all of pakistan <laughs> parts of afghanistan yeah. <laughs> like everybody's coming after yeah me. come at me bro or like they would say come at me sone ho <laughs> 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 that was my nuri nothing impression <laughs> so creepy <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but part is... of what's funny about this to me is that what you guys are talking about about how these read as homoerotic I'm like when I first started watching certain eras of Hindi film I was like uh yeah. right yeah. <laughs> no no you're absolutely on point they're like that. do you remember all those like Amitabh Shashi movies where they're like you know like taking a shower together and shit <laughs> like, what is that Oh my god. The worst um, one example that I always think about is like that um Akshay Kumar and Bobby Deol movie that came out. I think it was called Dosti. Have you guys heard of it? Have you ever seen that movie? I haven't seen it. No. Yeah, it's called <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Dosti Friends Forever. It's directed <laughs> by Sunil Darshan. Oh my God. <laughs> it, it stars Karina Kapoor, Lara Datta, and uh, Bobby and Akshay. And basically, I mean, they, they they it's it's yeah, it's about a movie about friendship and all that. But there's, I think, one of the two is dying at the end. Spoilers. It might be Bobby. It might be Akshay. I don't remember. But. The women don't are not even in that room. It's just about Bobby and Akshay crying and how their friendship is coming at an end and they couldn't like spend the rest of their lives together. And I was like, wait, <laughs> don't you have wives just outside? <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing ever. But Asim, it's those the friendship forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does kind of say it in the title. Uh. <laughs> Truth and advertising. Oh, one thing about the the uh, Mola Jet trailer, though, um, it, it is it might actually get. It's it, they're aiming for like a real international release. Um, mm-hmm. So if they do what they did with Tifa in Trouble, it might actually reach you, Beth. So that might be interesting. They're also so. they're also trying to launch it in China, which is you know getting that Amir Khan money, Little God money, uh, Shenzhen money. Is that Shenzhen? <laughs> um, <laughs> So that could be interesting. What I do find like two weird parts is that um, Fawad Khan did get kind of a skill rex haircut for this, but he didn't bulk up. And that's like where, where you were mentioning Amrita about, you know, he, him having kind of a very urban appeal. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know, like for like a Punjabi, like warrior kind of, you know, like ghee and lassi kind of guy, parante kind of guy. I think he should have bulked up a little. I don't know if you, he doesn't feel like a warrior to me in this one. But uh, so yeah, that's the point that like uh, one of the the piece that I was talking about, the one that was talking about how it was like so homo romantic, mm. uh, the original one that also mentioned like you know the physicality is like uh, pretty important, kind of like um, or the Tom Cruise, uh, Jack Reacher movies, you know, yeah. like uh, you need to like apparently like the whole shtick was that he was like the biggest guy in the village, yeah, so he would <laughs> beat everyone mm. up, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of a missed opportunity. I feel I, I would I, I I'm like I, I like seeing Fawad through punches and battle axes, but I would have also liked to see a little bit of heft to his punching. You know, I, I'm just an action guy, so I just feel visually it just seems a bit odd to me. Otherwise, it looks like you know, uh, what was that movie Rambo Rajkumar Raj, R Rajkumar with Shahid Kapoor where he's fighting 50 oh, people yeah. jumping around and he looks like a hamster on ecstasy. <laughs> And tell me more about how you love Shahid. 
at this moment i'm just picking boxes of things i hate you know like <laughs> shahid's movies tick ntr tick <laughs> noori natha tick <laughs> so yeah we wanted to kind of do a, a, a way of you know talking about the year and everybody's doing a top 5 top 10 kind of list and it's just normal that's part of what we do um but i don't i mean i don't think i've seen enough movies to really have a justifiable top 10 list i don't know about you amrita and beth because none of us are, are paid for this Same. shit right we do it for free like free so you know and it costs money costs time we have other things to do so i i've not seen all of the movies so i thought we would you know create kind of our our own rewards ca- awards category but also kind of just to make fun of awards in bollywood because like what was that other one a real social media star or something that katrina kaif won or <laughs> there was one that yeah. kriti sanan won last year which was also like what are, what are these award right. categories so i thought you know for the asmis we should uh, <laughs> also i call them asmis at a joke on on bbc but i really don't want to call them asmis <laughs> it's just <laughs> <laughs> We used to call it the Khandani. Khandani. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 that's a good one. Maybe we should go with that one. <laughs> the Khandani's then. Um so yeah, we wanted to have some uh, different categories and I I'll, I'll be honest, this uh, this was also very much inspired for us from, uh, from two podcasters that I loved, uh, Matt Singer and Alison Wilmore. They used to have these film spotting uh, SVU podcast and they had these categories initially. <laughs> but that podcast is defunct so i think it's you know you know we're like the mola jets we're just going to go and grab whatever we want you know it's ours now <laughs> so <no. laughs> i wish i spoke punjabi because i was going to go into punjabi here like like you were like a real good impression nuri not impression <laughs> uh, i'll need to get my sisters on the podcast for this i think <laughs> So yeah, we came with the we came up with a few categories. Um did you guys want to add or take away any categories by the way though, from the ones I sent? Oh, no, no, I think this is okay. No, yeah. good. And what I was also thinking, you know, these are our nominations. We're going to put it to the audience because democracy at least is still alive in Khandan podcast, you know. <laughs> it might have died <laughs> death everywhere else, but it's still here. So I'll put a poll up and I'd love to hear from everybody else what they thought of um what they thought of our picks um and uh take it from there. So the first category I came up with um was uh, the we didn't get it award. So these are movies that were lauded or were commercially successful that we personally didn't understand we didn't maybe because of our mistake we we are blindsided by the the amazingness of these movies or they were just terrible and people are wrong you know so um <laughs> So for the we didn't get it award and I also have Sujoy's list um he's not here but he sent it to me nicely so I can also read those um maybe Beth you can kick us up as top friend Is, was there a movie that you felt you didn't get it and Yeah well for popularity wise it would be um Sanju mm. um because well we'll talk more about this later but yeah that that film did not deserve to earn money. <laughs> um but if we also talk about we didn't get it as in I don't understand what this film was even trying to do I would give it to um Funay Khan which Ooh, is a, that's a good one. Which I really wanted to like but I just didn't understand what that movie was um thinking it was doing. Yeah, yeah. Those are two good good picks. Yeah. Sanju I think will probably come back on the list a few times. It's uh, yeah. it's it will appear many many times. Um uh, Abrita? Uh yeah, I agree with Sujoy actually like uh, October. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I don't uh I that was there and my witness as I tried and I tried and I tried <laughs> and like eventually I was just no. So That's right, we were going to watch it together and you were like I can't do this. <laughs> She loved me on my own. I think like what Beth said was like if you stuck with it beyond a certain point then it got better, but mm. like I just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. I think they were really going for like a French cinema kind of feel to it like you know like French cinema you watch like 2 hour movies and afterwards you're like okay so what happened they just walked away that's it 
and <laughs> <laughs> you like you start questioning what you did with your two two hours and you know what the point of life is and i don't know it, it didn't make me think of much it didn't make me and while i was there i was like the only thing i was like thinking is like oh wow varun took this role and it doesn't seem like one he would take on and but that was it i did think that uh, the actress was had a very kind of striking presence uh, banita sandhu sandhu i think her name is yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and i yeah. hope she, we see more of her in bollywood um because i thought that was probably the best part of october um but yeah it, it didn't really work for me either but it's not my pick um my pick is actually padmavat yeah um, yeah good I, yeah I think it's the worst of the three Sanjay Leela Bansali Deepika and uh, Ranveer collaborations. Um For sure. it's oh, yeah. it does it, it 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 created so much controversy which after watching the movie you feel all of the controversy was worth uh, nothing. Um right. I still am pissed off the way uh you know muslims were treated in that mo- movie more than how you know rajputis were treated in that movie and i think nobody talked about that which is really pissing me off still i also <laughs> i'm getting more annoyed because it seems like because it's the end of the year um they're really pushing it like it was the you know khijli was the the performance of for the ages which i just don't think it was no um, it as a character he was very weak to me um I'm calling the movie padmavat and then not being about deepika's character was stupid to me uh, shahid was horrible in it um so nothing about this movie worked it really pissed me off and now that we're nearing the air, year of the uh, you know end of the year and still kind of popping up on you know best of list and even when i asked people when i was kind of going on the bbc that you know send me your best of list because i'm struggling with it because i i liked movies i didn't love movies this year yeah. so padmava did come up and i was like wow it's like people are speaking a totally foreign language to me i do not get it so that's why it's basically my we i didn't get it nominee yeah <laughs> yeah i think the wedding has given that film another bump i really yeah. do yeah yeah and then the priyanka wedding where they did the pinga thing which is not right. pamavat but people get confused cuz all of sanjay leela panjali movies look the same anyway <laughs> <laughs> um okay so second one the they didn't get an award movies that we liked but the audience didn't accept or they weren't a commercial or a critical success um so yeah that's our second award for the khananis the they didn't get it amrita what was your pick Uh can I come back to you on that because I'm still thinking. Are you still thinking about it? <laughs> uh Beth or should I go first uh, maybe if if you I, I can go. I feel like so maybe I'm wrong and these got better reviews than I'm aware of, but I thought that both Blackmail and Kalakandi which are very similar mm. movies were actually pretty fun and kind of different in tone than, you know, I mean they were very similar to each other but they were kind of doing their own little oddball thing with with good actors in them and mm. I thought those maybe should have gotten a little more attention than they did. Mm yeah Kalakandi kind of came and went right and I did right. Yeah. Uh, and did. after after Sacred Games came out and then I don't even feel like that huge that huge round of you know raves that Seth was getting for that movie I don't remember anyone talking about you know what he had just done and it's actually pretty good and he's pretty good at it so i think i think a little more could be given to those and those are like the comedy equivalent of all the small town romance kind of films right so i wish i wish there was a little more energy for them yeah i think like um a uh, safe he squandered all the goodwill that he had he had bazaar and he had kalakandi sure <laughs> and i think kalakandi was probably in the making for a longer time i think bazaar they probably shot in a weekend or something like that yeah <laughs> like but i think i actually i saw somebody tweeting about how so given given race thugs and zero is sef actually the con of the year and i was like yeah i think he is <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yeah so uh, yeah I think those are quite like blackmail is streaming on prime even isn't it that's the Irfan Khan movie isn't it Yeah and yeah. I saw it on Netflix or something like that right. so yeah it's 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 available and I I would definitely I mean it's not it's not perfect and it's not for everybody but it's you know I would if you like black comedies and I do I think that that's a you know a perfectly fine contender Mm mm-hmm. right okay um the my didn't get it my they didn't get an award I, i was actually contemplating about a few movies i feel i think but so the the ones that did i i didn't want to nominate was uh hitchki and pari 
I think funny <laughs> people don't talk about it enough this year, and I think it's one of it's it's an amazing movie. Uh, it's really good, and it's very brave of Anushka to take and not just take this role but also produce it. Um, yeah, it's 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 really really cool that she did that. And Hitchki, I think, like within the genre of its movie, you know, like you know, like uh, disillusioned kids without hope getting like an inspiring teacher, like Dangerous Minds or Half Nelson, that kind of thing. Um, It's very much within that genre, but Rani Mukherjee really elevates it by being Rani, you know, and uh, that stutter and that the the, the kind of, uh, no, it's not stutter, it's Tourette syndrome, right? The Tourette syndrome she has and how she kind of portrays it, which is not necessarily how a classical portrayal of of Tourette would be, but it's like a Bollywoodized version. I thought that was really good. Um, But my nomination was actually... um, it was uh, sorry i'm pulling up the list mine was actually sweet haga uh, mm. i thought this was a i wo- agree yeah good <laughs> um, i think it was a wonderful movie uh, and uh, i don't think it got enough love and i i don't even think it was a, a box office smash or a big success or anything like that. it underperformed definitely and I think a lot of the people just thought, Teek hai. you know, they just came out and they watched it and they just left and that's it. But I thought it was braver for Varun and Anushka, especially Anushka, to take on this role than October, for example. Like, you know, that kind yeah. of, um, uh, I mean, it's very similar to this kind of Anandel Rai, kind of out of the big cities, kind of rural area, small town kind of entrepreneurship story. And uh, but it still had those Bollywood touches. I, I really liked Sweet Haga, and I think it didn't get like th- there's this uh, shot in uh, Chav Laga, the song, the main title song, where um, they suddenly meet on a bus, and uh, it's I think it's the first time they had lunch together, something like that, and suddenly uh, the song is playing and everybody in this uh, the bus starts swaying to the music, yeah, and they're still, sweet. and then everybody is still, and they start swaying to the music, and I thought that was just such a beautiful like Bollywood moment you know like yeah. without it being too overt it really kind of stuck with me and I thought the parents were great uh, yes <laughs> um, so I really liked Swedag and I think it didn't get enough love from people um, I, people were like actually outright mean to it yeah you know especially online I don't think people yeah. offline care that much hmm. but like people online were just outright mean for no reason right hmm. I, I might have missed the meanness. What were they mean about? Well, mostly Anushka. You know, uh, she got, uh, it was like, yeah, it was that whole like fan wars thing. But basically, you know, they just went to town o- over her crying face oh, or whatever. Oh, the meme, yes, that was, me- <laughs> yeah, that was very, very mean. Yeah, I remember that. So, yeah. um, and I don't, so I like, I like, like this movie, I thought this is like really played into Varun's strengths. Which is that he's a very likable person. Yeah. Um, and he does that uh, sort of like innocent uh, young man kind of a thing really well. Mm. And uh, it allowed him to like do something that wasn't like, you know, Govinda light mm. for once. Yeah. I, thought, like, yeah. I thought that was really good. And uh, Anushka, I thought, was lovely in it. And I don't know why. Like, it's called acting people. That's how, like, you know, like. That's how, that's what happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And also, the, My, oh, go ahead. Sorry, but I was just gonna say I I really liked that movie quite a bit too. Mm. And I I. My one complaint about it is that I felt like it was a little bit rushed. Mm. Like the kind of the mm. second half of how everything they work hard, but everything comes into place for them really conveniently. Yeah. And I think if they had spent maybe even like ten or fifteen more minutes, kind of showing. Because he goes from being a sewing machine salesperson uh, to ooh, a fashion yeah. designer, right? Yeah. And those are very different things. <laughs> and also knowing how to sew and knowing how to design are also different things, as we see on Project Runway all the time. So I'm not, I'm not saying it's impossible that he would know those things or that she would know those things. But it just came together way too fast at too fast a scale. Like if the big contest had been um, – in their city for like a government investment in a local business and they won it. I've been like, yes, that is Mm. perfect. But this, you know, it, it just got too glamorous too fast. That didn't make sense to me that, 
they that these very real seeming people i mean filmy but real right mm. would have would have actually been able to do that it didn't it didn't make sense and i didn't think the tone of their ultimate success matched really what had been set up mm. previously in the film but it's also good natured and obviously you root for them because they're delightful and they're and they're actually making really good points sort of good economic late stage capitalism points you know <laughs> <laughs> so I, I root for them, but I just was like, oh, just a little bit, just give it a little bit more to make it really feel more genuine. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I, 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 I can get with that criticism. Um, Sujoy's pick was, the, for the day didn't get an award, Thugs of Hindustan, which, uh, I, I mean, we've done a whole <laughs> podcast about it recently, so people can go back and uh, listen to that. Um, third category, the most played bop. Uh, <laughs> the song we kind of, yeah, played the most easily. Um, not the best song necessarily, but the ones that we enjoyed the most. Um, I'll go for... Uh, actually, Sujoy's one is quite good, um, but it's not mine. But Sujoy picked uh, O Meri Lela from Lela Majnu. I think uh-huh. the whole soundtrack is great. It's uh-huh. the soundtrack I've probably played... Like, it's top five for me. Like, I really love that uh, soundtrack a lot. Um, but my my pick was actually the Dharak title track which is actually the song I've probably listened to the most. Uh, I just think it's a beautiful composition. And, uh, uh, like, I'm really excited about what Ajay Atal are doing with uh, music composition and kind of, like, I just I feel it needed kind of something fresh. And the other, the older guys, like the, you know, the Shankar Isan boys, the Vishal, uh, Vishal Shaker, they were kind of getting stale, I feel. Um, AR, AR does what AR does. Nobody can, you know, he, he, he's not within anybody's control. Uh, Pritam seems to have disappeared. So I just felt, you know, oh, yeah. Ajay, Ajay Atul were bringing something fresh. And I think, like, they have an amazing song in uh, Zero. I like Suraya a lot, um, even a few songs of the Thugs of Hindustan, but the best one they made was, for me, the Dharak soundtrack. And it was also the the first uh, time that, you know, those small bunnies, small, cute, little cute bunnies appeared on screen, and <laughs> it's just cute. I like them. I, I root for them. I stand a queen. Is that how they say it? <laughs> Give it up, Asim. <laughs> Bro. I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> oh... Okay, I will raise a hand of shame and confess that the bop that I've listened to uh, most this year is uh, Chogara Tara. I knew it was <laughs> going to be that one! I knew it! I knew it! I am so disappointed in myself, but this is true. You know, when I was making the list, I was actually going to autofill it for you. Like, Amrita, I know for you it's Chogara Tara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what my life has come to. <laughs> Uh, Beth, did you have a pick for this one? I didn't, you know, I didn't, I was really out of the loop on music really? this year, but I, I did, the song that I really enjoyed, like, actually in the film that I thought where it worked really well was Oi Hitchkey in Hitchkey. Right. And it's one of those, like, let's get stuff done montages, and it's just really cute, and the kids are cute, and Ronnie's cute, and everyone's happy, and it's completely unrealistic, but it was delightful. <laughs> nice one, nice. Yeah, that, I, I like that movie as a whole. I think it also suffers that, that it came out in January and people just kind of forgot about it because it doesn't make that much noise. Um, but yeah, I like HQ. People should watch it. Oh. Yep. The worst remix award is the next one. <laughs> I think this is like the a dessert category for what Bollywood is inf- uh, infringing upon us. Um, there were so many to pick from, you know. Even so like until many. like last week, there's Gali Gali from KGF, which is terrible. Uh, uh, it's so bad. It's so bad. But what was the ultimate bad one for you guys? Uh, uh, Amrita, maybe you, did you have a pick that came up immediately for you? Well, Sujoy's is actually pretty good. Like the, um, you know, the... Dilbar one, but there was also Urvashi. Urvashi, <laughs> bringing him back to my Shahid hate. What the f- Shahid? What is this? It's disrespectful. Like, as a rule, nobody should remake Rahman songs. It doesn't need it, you know. Yeah. Just have yeah. Rahman do it again, you know. He can just like update the the production values, get like seventy more people singing in it because he likes doing that. You know, have some like uh, Karnataka drums in the jungle or something like that. Let him do whatever he wants to do. Do not get some like new ass producer DJ to do. And then you have Shahid Kapoor and uh, Shadda. I think is it? No, it's not yeah. Shadda. Or is it Kia? No, it's, uh... I get these yeah. confused. I get these actresses confused sometimes. Sorry about that. Is it not Kiara Advani, if I'm mistaken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
think that's her. I think he should have a bit more respect about these songs, Shahid. You know, he can't like do his silly <laughs> dances or anything. Like st- stupid hamster. Uh, yeah, Urvashi <laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, so, yeah, but I actually like Dilbar, Dilbar. I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, I like the Arabic version. Have you guys seen the Arabic version? They're doing, the like, oh, no. T-Series is adding now, like, they're probably crossing over to the Middle East a little bit and uh, getting these Arab singers. So they did one for Dilbar, and the the the, the girl that's dancing in it, Nure, uh, Nur Fatahi, I think her name is, she sings the Arabic version, which... She seems more in like the clip. Looking at it, she just seems to have be having more fun with it. Where it's like a very more sexualized version in the Hindi version. So the mm. Arab version is actually fun. And then uh, for uh, Padmavat's Binte Dil, they also did a, a, an Arab version with it, which uh, just released like a couple of days ago. Which is it's fun that they're doing this. Um, yeah, but Beth, did you have a worst remix? Uh, I don't want to pile on what you did in a previous episode, but I am not into the Ankhmare. You are not. not. Oh, wow. I am not. Um, I just think that, I mean, I you know, here's where I didn't grow up with the 90s version, whatever, but I still think that that, that version is, like, it's outside, it's free, it's fun. And this is just, it's just stupid. It's just people in this <laughs> set and... Ooh, characters walking in sunglasses, like we've seen that eight million times, especially in this kind of remakey thing. Um, why is Tussar Kapoor there? Like, I mean, I know why he's there, but uh, and you, I, awesome. I think it was you who was talking about why isn't Ranveer dancing more in it? <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just, it's just super pointless. I feel like they could have thrown in anything that they wrote, you know, over the course of four or five hours and stuck it in there, and it would have had the same impact. Yeah. Yeah, no, I that... feel like the only good thing about that Ankhmare song is the fact that it allows Sarah and Ranveer to dork out in all the interviews and like sing that song. Yeah. And it's like watching Papa Dork and Betty Dork like get together. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like mentoring her in how to be a film dork. It's adorable. So yeah, that's the only good thing that I can think about for that song. Yeah, I love that super cut somebody made like yesterday or the day before about yeah. her singing the version everywhere really badly. <laughs> but I also appreciate her ballsiness to do this in front of Faridun Sheryar, which I feel is kind of like a <laughs> underhanded diss she's giving. So respect to the queen for that one. <laughs> can I do the Yas Queen? Can I not? No, no, still no? Okay. Still can't. No, I'll take Amrita. <laughs> I'll take Amrita's word. <laughs> I, 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 it's a very important task for the women in my life to keep me in check. <laughs> I follow those guidelines. <laughs> Next anyway. uh, category, the undeserved hit of the year. Um, Race 3, definitely by a, by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, Sujoy's pick two, race three, and he also had Sanju in it, which brings us back to Beth's pick earlier. Um, is what is your undeserved hit of the year? Is it also Sanju? It's also Sanju. Ah, yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, I can. I. I won't. I wouldn't argue with anyone for race three either. My God. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it race three was a hit though. Like, was it? I thought it made money. It no? made money? Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. It made 300 crore worldwide. So, yeah. 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 You know what, what's happening? And I, I, I'm, I fully admit it. I kind of want to rewatch it. <laughs> no, and here's the thing. I do too. Because after I heard your podcast about it, I've had this little thing in my head about like, maybe I just have the completely wrong attitude. Maybe this is just a giggle fest yeah. and I need, I don't know, like marshmallows and wine or I don't know, something like that. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> watch along, watch along. Yeah, I think this is like worth a watch along for sure. I think we should do a race to watch along next year. But Good. that does not mean it deserves 300 crore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And Sanju, yeah, Sanju, I get it. I, I get like why it, it made a lot of money, I would say. It's probably the least. It, it's a, I, I kind of think it's cool that Ranveer got a hit again because we forget that the boy yes, needs it, true. you know? It's been a while. And I mean, I, I really do like Ranveer a lot, like on screen. And I, I too. you know, I want him to do well. And he's, ma- he's taking a lot of these chances which don't always pay off. So I want him to keep doing those. And I think it just needed, he needed a little bit of that hit. 
you know cachet to it it's a, a bit like Adil Hai Mushkil which wasn't like an outright blockbuster gangbuster hit but it kind of you know gave him a little bit of uh, you know space again otherwise we'll just end up losing these actors I think uh, yeah. m- my undeserved hit of the year is uh, Sonu Ki Tatti oh, <laughs> um, oh, I, I've forgotten that movie existed yeah it was it was quite popular there for a while wasn't it it, mm-hmm. it was very very popular and uh, I think it's it, it, it it's a movie that makes me actively angry watching it and I mm. think people that like this movie I think we should be looking at their DMs and their emails and what they're browsing because they seem like really terrible people. If you can kind of, if you buy into the worldview of Sonu Kititi, it's terrible. Like, I, I, I basically treats women the way US espionage shows treat Muslim characters. You know, they they never trust them. They put up ob- ob- obstacles in front of them. And then just because of story point of view, they turn out to be eagle, evil. It justifies all of the terrible things that the main character has been doing throughout the movie. It's it's a horrible 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 movie and I do not think it deserves all that money and uh, but I do think Karthik Aryan is a star who probably is an asshole behind the scenes but he is a star so that's maybe something that mm. good came out of it and I also really like the actress in it. Uh, the, I think her name is Nasid Barusha. Um, she's really really good I had never heard of her and I think she again has a very striking kind of appearance on screen so I hope those two can kind of you know make something better and I do wonder about Love Ranjan and his movies because he's working next with Ranbir if I'm not mistaken so I don't know what they'll be doing there hmm. um, next one and I, I was kind of like wondering if you guys would find something here or not but it was just like best marketing fail or you know um uh, best uh best lost opportunity in terms of marketing for a movie um i, I i'll give you my one because i think yeah. it kind of like <laughs> the idea that i had in my mind that i don't couldn't really formulate but i feel the makers of race 3 should have made a product tie in with whatever they were smoking when they made that movie. <laughs> so I think that's the best, best marketing fail. They could like have like, you know, crack pipes or something like that, you know, marketed with uh, uh, this crack, crack pipe has do pelu, two pelus, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> that's an exact line from race three. If people have forgotten. And it should be distributed though by the little pen that he has that, you know, is used to blow up an entire oil field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that movie. We need to do a rewatch on that one. We really do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Joy's was best marketing field, Thugs of Hindustan, which I I also understand. I think what mm-hmm. Yashraj was trying to do and what the filmmakers and the people were trying to do was so different from each other, they could never really find a compromise. And that really hurt the movie at the end. Um, Beth, did you have any? I, I mean, I, I read... Sujoy's choices before I wrote mine, and I, I would agree with him that it must be thugs. Because also, when I heard your, as the, it, I still haven't gotten to see it, but you know, when I heard you all talking about it, uh, you know, about it being sort of 70s style and whatever, I'm like, oh, I would not have gotten that at all mm. from what they showed me. And that I'm the target market for, <laughs> you know, like yeah. 70s movies redone. Um, and they didn't express that at all. And when you were talking about, you know, the, the songs not being put out at the right time and stuff like that, it does sound like they really messed up. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah, I agree with uh, with Thugs as well, just because it was just hilarious to me that like they leaned in so hard to the Pirates of the Caribbean thing and then as soon as people were like, um, we've seen this movie <laughs> like, there were like five of them and they made like billions <laughs> of dollars. Did you think that we wouldn't notice? And then suddenly they were like, Oh no, 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 no. We are not that <laughs> and yeah. it was just it's like how stupid do you think people are? You yeah. know, like it's just really funny to me. Yeah. And I mean, I was at that trailer launch and I heard people specifically from Yashraj say that they wanted it to be a Pirates Caribbean movie. So, and I do not think that was ever communicated necessarily to the filmmakers because nothing in that film reminds you of Pirates. So, yeah, I think there's, there's there was definitely a disconnect there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one. Um, best action sequence. Uh, did you guys have any action? Because you guys are such big action aficionados. I know that, right? <laughs> Uh, everything from race three everything was race three was the, <laughs> is the best 
भाई का एक्शन इज लाइक वर्ल्ड का बेस्ट एक्शन मालूम Yeah, especially that paragliding he was doing with the three-piece suit on, amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. Beth, we need to do a watch for that one. It'll be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. My pick is um, I well, I've said this before. I like the big historical battles, so that was the only part of Padmava that and the ostrich oh, yeah. that I liked. And the ostrich, of course. Yeah. Yeah, the ostrich was the best part, and it was in the first minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ostrich looked embarrassed. He was standing next to it and weaving. Uh, he's <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a ostrich has got to eat too. So. <laughs> uh, me and uh, Sujo have the same one, the same pick here. Is the Bhavesh Joshi motorcycle chase sequence. Uh, which is bonkers it's so good um i think i've been recommending people to just watch that sequence and not bother with the whole movie although the movie isn't that bad but uh yeah that 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 motorcycle action sequence is pretty damn ace um, yeah very impressive um next award category the social media clout award and this was probably the one that i was like most thinking of when i was thinking about the realest social media star <laughs> um it's just about you know the person that could make can make the most online uh, noise uh which i think has become more and more of an important part of uh of uh you know bollywood film promotions yeah. um did you have any picks for this amrita i feel like it should actually go to the fan clubs more than the stars themselves because the oh. stars themselves like you know the stars themselves they put up like pretty um boring like boilerplate um status updates especially alia you know like you just see like her putting clearly by some social media manager i think the realest one is katrina because katrina really embraced instagram yeah. and you actually get a sense of like what katrina's life is like yeah. um but yeah i think the fan clubs like especially for um sonam deepika anushka and katrina like the top 4 and aishwarya mm. aishwarya but aishwarya's is like a weird fan base because they are just like fighting battles from the 90s like yeah just, yeah they get really know. excited for magazine shoots <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right I, I, i'm just like yeah i don't really get that but yeah. the four of them like the other four like uh, their fan clubs really really <laughs> drive the conversation about anything that they're in or near yeah um <clears throat> and priyanka chopra i guess yeah mm. yeah P- pc also Best but pc is more for a target than she is like a fan club thing but okay mm. yeah best did you have a pick here uh swara oh yeah that was up there oh. for me too yeah yeah she uses it um herself right yeah uh, i think so yeah no she's she's quite good and i i think she i mean i, I like her a lot like she has, she's been a, i think she's quiet down in the second half of the year but the first year was all swara you know it was all but mavat her le- open letter and then she had vida the wedding come out and she got a lot of slack for that too so yeah i think she's definitely uh there um so joy picked out priyanka chopra fans so again the fan clubs he went for and eating up the the cut article alive the writer of the cut article yeah. alive which i think we all are united on that one i don't think it was just pc fans even i took umbrage from that right oh no and, that was uh, horrible yeah that was really bad uh yeah i wonder what's happened with that writer since then actually i hope she still has a career you know Um yeah um mine was actually Sonam Kapoor um I was thinking of her yeah, yeah. I was like yeah I bet Asim is going to take Sonam <laughs> Yeah I mean like for a for a actress that is not really a good actress <laughs> she <laughs> uh and I mean I, like you know I I defend Katrina on an ongoing basis so I, it's it's kind of unfair for me to say Sonam is a bad actress or something but her work has never really connected with me and her her uh, and i think she could just do better you know like the 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 family she comes from the amount of privilege she has how beautiful and striking she is uh, you know the 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 fan club she has i did i just think she could do better and i i don't think she ever has so uh, i mean she has these you know the the nirjas and stuff like that but uh, none of them have really stood out for me uh, um, so yeah I, but she does 
manage to uh, dominate social media conversations with whatever she says and she you know she takes on the mumbai police then she takes on you know haters and she pick, she really uh, stands up for pretty much every actress out there and uh, a lot of times she does maybe have foot and mouth disease but i think her heart is in the right place so <laughs> Uh yeah I think Sonam probably gets that one from me. <laughs> and again it was funny because I'd already picked her and then she made the tweet about the fashion thing which is like wow people talk a lot about Sonam when it's about other things than her movies. She was actually in a yeah. movie this year she was in Sanju but people don't even talk about that you know. Oh barely uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's let's go a bit quicker, maybe, so we can get to the zero re- review too. Then um, the worst person of the year award, and I think there were a lot of picks here. Um, Sujoy picked Sajid Khan, and yeah. also Theresa May. But then, if you add Theresa May, you should also add Donald Trump probably to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Sajid Khan. Um, it was his worst person of the year award. Uh, mine was actually Aloknath. Um, mine too. Good. <laughs> um, one reason is because I just saw him in Sonu Ki Tatti like a couple of days ago. So I was like, ah, that just feels weird seeing him on screen. But I think of all of the Me Too stories that came out, his was one of the most horrific one I've heard, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So Alok Nath gets it. And the, like in at the, at the Khandani's, we don't give trophies like he'll get a juta from me if i ever see this guy uh, you know it's not necessarily uh, this is yeah he his story has been probably the worst one for me uh, amrita you agree to what uh, that ke okay, alognath ko jute maro jute nahi like send him to jail yeah, yeah he should yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um beth did you have one Uh yeah mine is Button because Ooh. oh well I'm not either of them so I can't speak about this. Oh yeah. Just no. <laughs> When you talk about people using their privilege to obtain you know to to help. Oh he's the opposite of that. Get out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. When he when the Nana Patekar story came out again and people asked him to comment and he wouldn't. Oh right, um, right, right, right. You right. know that that there's so many other things he could have said that still made it clear that he wasn't comfortable weighing in, you know, that that he doesn't have that he felt he didn't have facts or whatever, which I'm sure is not even why he said that, but yeah, I just thought that was pretty despicable. Right, 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 right. 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 It is not as despicable as actually raping people. Let, mm. let me be clear, but uh, you know, in terms of lost opportunity, certainly mm. he's up. There. Yeah. Well, that Khandani took a dark turn, so let's switch it around again. Um, <laughs> movies we were most so last two actually movies we were most annoyed we missed watching. Um, Sujoy was zero because he would have loved being part of this podcast, um, <laughs> but uh, his pick is zero. Um Beth did you have a a movie that you said oh I wish I'd seen that or uh you know Yeah the- I thought I thought I would get to but I hope because I just found it on streaming um but I really want to see that um I'm also really curious if if in these year in list people are going to come out and say anything further about Sorma because mm-hmm. that that looked interesting to me I didn't bother to see it um but I could easily be convinced mm-hmm. It's on Netflix that when I think it's streaming so Oh good good yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Sorma yeah. yeah I tend to avoid biopics it's just not my genre for that one it, it is a biopic right Sorma was a real person Yeah Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amrita, did you have a pick? Movies you most annoyed? I bet it's Thugs of Hindustan, so you could have made fun of it with us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I throughout the year, I think I had like this. Uh, I got into this rut sometimes of like not watching the movie until after we had <laughs> done our podcast, like with Race Three and Thugs of Hindustan, and I kind of regret that. Like, mm. I wish <laughs> I made more of an effort, but also I'm happy I didn't make much of an effort, so <laughs> it balances. Mm. Okay. So, but, w- did you have any other pick, or was it really those two? <laughs> yeah, like, I um, I wish I'd seen three on the big screen. Yeah. Like, I would have liked to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh. Mine was actually Vida the Wedding. Um, I I think I was traveling at that time and I just missed it and uh, unfortunately it's also not streaming on Netflix or Prime I think it is on some other uh, 
a service that I don't I'm, I'm not a member of um, I, I mean I was excited for this movie from the start and I still kind of miss, feel I, I kind of missed out that I didn't you know be part of its success so I think that's kind yeah. of a shame uh, also Mukka Pass I like I think a lot of people a few people have been talking about Mukka Pass in this oh, yeah. end of year list and yeah. I, especially for that actor I think his name is Vineet Kumar because he really went to a lot of lengths to make this movie happen and uh, it just looks like a, and I like these kind of rocky kind of stories um, so Mukabaz was definitely one I wished I'd seen. Um, yeah, final one, uh, best movie of the year for you guys. Um, Sujoy picked Andadun followed by Badhai Ho, uh, which is actually also my pick is Andadun. Um, and uh, funnily enough, Badhai Ho was almost going to be on the my I didn't get it award list. <laughs> Um, oh. I just recently saw it and a lot of people were talking about it and it, it's fine. It's basically, I think it's for, it's for me what Sui Dhaga was for a lot of other people. Mm. You know, it was, it's, it was fine. Um, but, uh, yeah. So Andadun is for me, definitely the movie of the year. Uh, and I didn't expect it. I didn't think until the last moment I was like, uh, I don't like, I, I've not loved any movie and I just saw uh, Andadun four or five days ago. So maybe that also affects my ranking because I just saw it and it's actually a good movie. Um, and uh, Tabu was amazing in it. Um, sure but was. Uh, yeah, Andadun is, takes it from me. Beth, what about you? Hitchki. Hitchki. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's just, that's just so up my alley. Um, mm. You know, and I, I, like you said, Ronnie elevated it. It is kind of trite. It is a movie we've all seen before, but I, it's just, to me, it was pretty perfect. Great. Uh, Amrita? Uh, I think Andadun for me as Mm. well. Okay. Good. I think that's it. I think I want to really see what our, um, what our listeners are thinking. So I'll put a poll up on Twitter, probably on the U podcast feed and let people decide what they vote. And then maybe on the next episode, we can see if our audience agrees with us or not. Uh, and uh, maybe, you know, if they want to have us chat about any other categories for next year, we can add them or take them away. Uh, could be interesting to get some feedback on that. Um, shall we move on to our main review, which is,